Those calls are ridiculous, uh, wrong, egregious, and consumers should fight back. That consumer protection lawyer says it's likely that you've been getting a bunch of election-related calls and even text messages ahead of this year's presidential race. Those calls and texts can be a nuisance, and some of them are illegal. And that's why you may be entitled to some money. Jackie DeTore explains how it works in this week's Fox 43 Finds Out. If I just scroll through my call log right now and messages, I could show you a whole bunch of calls and texts from numbers I don't know, asking me if I'm ready to vote for their candidate. And I'm sure a lot of you can do the same thing. It's annoying, right? Well, some of those calls are breaking the law, and you may have the right to get some money in return. Fox 43 finds out how you may be able to turn those calls into cash. During an election season in Pennsylvania, some of us may want to put our phones on silent until after November 3rd. Whether it's a call reminding you to vote or a text message bashing a candidate, it seems like we can't escape these election communications. Pennsylvania is a battleground state, so um, if, you're, if there's going to be any abuse or potential abuse in the areas surrounding robocalling involving voter records, you're likely to find it in Pennsylvania. Jim Francis is a consumer protection lawyer here in the Commonwealth. He says he has plenty of clients who have made money just by answering these calls. $500 per call up to $1,500 per call. So how can you cash in? Well, what they can do is they can sue under the Telephone Consumer Protection Act um, and actually get statutory damages. That's the best way to, to stop it. That law has been around since 1991. However, it doesn't cover all of those calls and texts you're getting. First, you'll have to prove it's a robocall. If somebody is misusing voter information to intimidate um, or coerce um, consumers into paying debts uh, or for any reason, all of those calls are actionable and consumers have uh, cause of action to bring a lawsuit against uh, any of those robocallers. Calls like that are happening in Pennsylvania. The Secretary of State and Attorney General issued a warning about robocalls spreading disinformation about mail-in ballots. The callers claim personal information about mail-in voters will be shared with law enforcement agencies seeking to arrest people on outstanding warrants and with credit card companies seeking to collect outstanding debts. The AG says that's simply not true. The lawyer says this would be one of those calls that could put money in your pocket if you can get some information when you pick up. I would encourage the consumer to maybe engage that person. Who are you calling? Who are, who are you? Where are you calling from? Um, see if you get any information that way. Take a screenshot of the phone number and the length of the call. You'll need all of that information if you do plan to sue. Or if you get enough information, you can contact that company that's calling you with proof it's illegal and you can try to settle out of court as well. You'll also likely have to prove that you didn't give consent, which can be the tricky part. For instance, Pennsylvania sells your voter registration information. The Department of State says that's considered public record for a fee. It includes your phone number if you do provide that information on your voter registration. And sometimes that registration is enough consent for campaigns to contact you. This is likely why you're getting a lot of election related text messages too. Now, in order to cash in on those, you'll have to prove that the text was from auto dialing technology. Getting a text message with the wrong name could be a sign of a robo text, but it could also be human error, too. In some cases, campaigns will hire people to physically hit send on those messages as a workaround of the law. If you say, hey, I like this campaign and you provide that campaign with your number, you can be viewed as implicitly consenting to being called. Now, even though it may take a little bit of legwork to prove you're getting robocalls, the lawyer says the success rate of making money is pretty good. The courts are very protective of consumers and, and these calls. The lawyer says he has won a ton of these cases since companies don't really have much of a defense if you have the proof. Now, it will take some time and work if you want to make money on those calls or texts. And also, remember, prove that they're robocalls. If you don't feel like doing that and you just want those calls or messages to stop, just say that or type it and document that too. Once you tell a company or campaign that you revoke your consent to be contacted, they are supposed to stop. And if you have a story you want me to look into, Fox 43 wants to find out. Let me know. Send me a message on Facebook or email. Fox 43 finds out at fox43.com.